Hello YouTube and fellow hams. Today we're looking at uh, carbon resistors. A while back, a uh, acquaintance of mine mentioned who he uh, he had a friend that uh, that uh, designed audio equipment, and he mentioned that you always wanted to use metal film resistors in the signal path of an audio circuit because carbon resistors are noisy. I think I knew that from years ago, but I did some research just to refresh myself, and it's true. Carbon resistors are noisy. These old style carbon uh, resistors, they're generally just a flat cylinder with the bands on it, it's a Bakelite case. Inside of there is a couple of conductive cups and carbon packed between them, and the carbon, depending upon its density and uh, what materials are mixed in with it, is going to provide you with a set resistance. Now, carbon resistors have an advantage. They can take a bit of heat. Um, they can stand short bursts of uh, power above their rated capacity pretty well um, and not break down. They have some disadvantages. Over time, the carbon crystallizes and the resistance begins to go up. I'm going to pause the video here to mention that while I was collecting resistors to make the big Franken resistor with the 10 100 ohm resistors, um, going through the drawer, I found plenty of uh, 100 ohm resistors. They're all quite old, though, and I was checking each of them on an ohm meter. Um, I would recommend doing that if you're building a project and you're taking resistors out of your parts box. Check them on an ohm meter. The old carbon resistors, as I said, when they get old, they, the carbon can crystallize and their resistance can go up. Well, these were all marked 100 ohms, 10% tolerance, but I had some that were 200 and some ohms, 300, 500 and some ohms, 800 ohms. One was one mega ohm. So yes, carbon resistors can definitely go up in value as they age. So you should check your resistors before you put them to use in your products. Okay, back to the video. To test the noise in carbon resistors, I have a 1K carbon resistor, a single resistor, and then I made this beast which is 10 100 ohm resistors to make a 1K resistor. Except that we have 10 carbon resistors. My theory being whatever noise factor there is is going to be multiplied by 10 here and we might be able to see it on the scope. Now, uh, why do carbon resistors make noise? Well, they don't make noise. But since the carbon... Let's draw it out here. Here's our resistor. And inside of here, we have carbon packed between a couple of conductors. And just as my poor art skills illustrate, that carbon is not uniform. There's little bunches of it, little clusters. Um, it's, uh, it's like clumpy sand packed really tight, right? Well, as electricity flows through there, the electrons bunch up in those little clusters and then burst free and bunch up and burst free and that creates little spikes of noise as the signal passes through a carbon resistor. We're talking very, very, very small. Which is why I wanted to do this experiment. Let's see how much noise we get. So what I have um, is a 1K single carbon resistor, 10 100 ohm resistors to make a big 1K resistor. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to refocus the camera up on the scope screen and we're going to start with a baseline where I've got the probe and the ground connected to the same lead. So we'll get a baseline of noise on the screen. And then I'm going to go to uh, just the 1K resistor and we'll see what kind of noise we get on the screen. And then I'm going to put the 10 100 ohm resistors in, which will still be 1K of resistance, but times 10 resistors, and we'll see if there's an increase in noise. So I'm going to reposition the camera and then we'll start this experiment. Well, well, hopefully I can get this done before the camera dies. The battery's about gone. So here's our baseline. I'm on 10 millivolts per division. I'm going to put this directly between two graticules. And you can see we've got a fairly quiet trace. A little tiny bit of noise, but you'd expect that. The front end of the scope's not perfect. Now I'm going to clip in the single 1K resistor. Let it settle down. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. But there are tiny little spikes you're seeing appear above and below the line. See those little spikes that sort of appear and disappear? That's our noise from the carbon resistor. 
Okay, let's hook in Franken resistor. Give me a second here. Get this connected. Let it settle down. And look at that. I don't know if you can see that. We had about two millivolts of noise before, and now we have those little peaks appearing almost from the bottom to the top of the next radicule, almost a full 10 millivolts of peaky noise. So there you go. The noise in carbon resistors. Isn't that something? And I'm not passing very much current through it because I'm just going from the ground right to the probe. Um, and that's random enough. That's not interference from a fluorescent light or the camera or anything. That would have a real pattern to it. I'm on a very slow, um, slow speed trace. 60 cycle would have a huge wave to it. You know, those those are random little spikes, and that's that's our carbon noise. And just to compare with our baseline again, I'll take the resistor out, and we'll just go right to ground. Let it settle down. You can see the trace is much, much, much quieter. There's still little tiny spikes in noise, but they're hardly visible to my eye, probably not visible on the camera at all. And once more, for another comparison, we'll go to our single. 1K resistor. And it's just a little bit, the spikes are just a little tiny bit bigger. Maybe about uh, 3 to 4 millivolts from the top to the bottom spikes. So there you go. The noise in carbon resistors. Ain't that something.